Being a journalist has allowed me to see Canada in a special way for almost 50 years now. There's a story they tell out here on the prairies. Through its communities. Hello once again from Montreal. We're in a shaft at the old syndicate coal mines here in Spring Hill, Nova Scotia. Through its people. Well, the Rosemary Brown table is all smiles right now. Through their struggles. Do you worry about the ice? Through their victories. At stake today, Brian Mulroney's place in history and a document that will shape the country for generations to come. You've been to Canada once. Look, I, I think that Canada is one of the most impressive countries in the world. Meeting some extraordinary people along the way. Often with a crowd. Being witness to extraordinary circumstances. Good evening again from the Berlin Wall. Leaving the CBC's flagship will not be easy. But what's important is that the national of the future will continue to reflect our world, our country, and our people. It was Labor Day when you announced, last Labor mm -hmm. Day, when you announced that you were stepping down from the studio, stepping down from the National. Right. July 1st then was a long way off. Yeah, it sure seemed like a long way <laughs> off then. And to pack it all up, because you've been packing up your <laughs> yeah. office. It's so strange to see your office yeah. empty. And it's that actually, cardboard. <laughs> it's actually packing that, that's convinced me I was doing the right thing. <laughs> I mean, I've got so, you've been in my office many times, and you know, there's a, a lot of clutter. Uh, and part of that clutter are uh, rocks that I've collected over the years. Uh, everywhere from the, uh, the Berlin Wall, the weekend it came down, the Great Wall of China, um, sand from Normandy, rocks from Vimy Ridge, you know, Dieppe, you name it. There's been lots of things. And over the years, I've sort of collected them and put them on my desk, and they've all sort of kind of meant something to me, obviously, uh, given their history. And I often used to say to myself, you know, I should really label these. <laughs> <laughs> and you never did? <laughs> I never did. And so as I was putting them away, I suddenly realized, you know, I'm not sure which is which here. <laughs> so maybe it really is time to get going. What are you doing with all of that? Well, I, you know, right now it's in a box. Mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll keep it all. And, it's, you know, I've always, you know, quite apart from the job, I've always been a big uh, history buff. Mm -hmm. And being able to reach out and touch history, especially to places you've been, that mean something special. Um, it's uh, it, it's a nice feeling, not just to me, but you know my my son is big on on sure. this kind of thing too, and uh, so it'll uh, it'll always find a place, even if I'm not sure which is which. <laughs> Somewhere in there, yeah. is is that particular rock? As you've been going through that process though of tearing down and packing up, and seeing the totality of what you've done, mm -hmm. what's been going through your mind? Well, it, it does kind of set you back for a minute. You know, you, we tend in this job, you know, we do our work, we, you know, get to the exciting places and meet the exciting people, but sometimes you don't think of it in the big picture. And when you start to add up, and in the case of, you know, hosting the National, having done it for 30 years, there are a lot of memories there. Mm -hmm. And you really have been, you know, an eyewitness to history, as, as Milton used to say. Good evening from the Netherlands, Baghdad, in Tiananmen Square tonight from London, in Vimy Ridge, France, from Kandahar, Afghanistan. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and people look to you for the, the lessons of history. You know, I gave a speech the other day at the Canadian Club, and it was about that. It was taking some moments from my career and trying to interpret what they mean about us as Canadians. And... Uh, and so I've been doing a lot of that lately. Reflecting uh, on that. Reflecting, and, and it's been partly due to exactly what you say, uh, packing up. You've, you forget things. Mm -hmm. You know, you forget little things that you did, and you suddenly realize, wow, that was, that was a special moment. You know, it was pretty... Pinch me almost. I was, yeah. I was there for all of that. And, and you mentioned Churchill, and in your case, none of that was the plan back no. in 68 when no, they discovered sure you in, in Churchill right. in that famous... Uh, airplane call yeah it, it wasn't you're right it wasn't the plan I mean I, had, I hadn't done well at high school I didn't have my diploma mm -hmm. and I'd gone off into the Navy I hadn't done so well there either uh, and I ended up in a little airport in uh, Churchill Manitoba mm -hmm. working for a little airline called Transair and out of the blue this guy comes up to me who'd heard my voice on the PA system and says you should be in radio and I went yeah sure <laughs> and he said no seriously I'm the manager of the station 
and I've got an opening. And you'd be great if you're interested in doing the late night shift. And that's how it started, September of 1968. So it's like 49 years ago this fall. And, um, you know, away, away I went. And immediately I knew two things. One, I love doing this. Mm -hmm. Two, I'm not going to screw this up. Because do you ever think, I mean, what might have been your path, where <laughs> you might be today, had he not heard that, had that not happened? Yeah, I've thought about it. I was going to have to do something about, uh, you know, my, my life direction at that mm -hmm. point. Um, there was a saying in Churchill, which is a great community, faces massive challenges all the time, and uh, this year, no less than, than years past. Uh, but there was a saying there that if you stayed more than three years, you'd never leave because you, there's really something about the place. I say this about a lot of remote communities. Uh, and I was, um, I was just a couple of months into it, but I stayed there for three years. And when I had the opportunity to leave to go to Winnipeg with the CBC, it, I, I really had to think about it. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a hard time making that decision. Um, but uh, what would I have done? I could have been, I could still be in Churchill loading bags. <laughs> on, the, on the plane, who knows? Do you worry about the ice? Yes, I do, yeah. Um, what's going to happen if it all melts, melts away? All jolly we minor men and minor men are we. They've all worked the coal mines in Cape Breton. Now they sing to preserve the heritage and the folklore of the island's mining communities. Canada is still here tonight, but just barely. Quebecers have voted no to sovereignty. But of course, the story the whole world is watching is the historic switch to the year 2000. This is the day that Winnipeg has been waiting for, worrying about, even dreading. Let us recap for you what has happened today on what has proven to be an unforgettable day. Name the youngest MP in the House of Commons. Pierre Luc I looked it up, Peter. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Peter Mansbridge from downtown Toronto. For the most part, an eerily dark Toronto. You know, in this business, uh, you rarely get a break. It's, it's probably going to be the hardest thing for me after July 1st. Um, I won't be on call like I have been for 30 years, every day, whether I was on holidays or not on holidays. I used to feel guilty getting on a plane to fly somewhere for fear something would happen during that time. <laughs> and you know, back you'd have to go home. Yeah, especially after 9-11, sure. when we were all so tense about going anywhere for any length of time. Um, but now suddenly, you know, it's, it's, it won't matter where <laughs> I am or what I'm doing. And I can, uh, I can just relax, but there's going to be a part of me that will... Uh, you know, we'll look up when a fire engine goes by or a police mm -hmm. car or there's a bulletin on the air. Or there's I'll... the next big breaking story that exactly. you're not back on. Yeah. You'd uh, be wanting to get on that plane. But it does give you the freedom to do all the things that are you. Mm. The Peter Mansbridge that we don't see here in mm. the studio or on the air. Who is that Peter Mansbridge? Who is the Peter Mansbridge who, for example, your son Will sees? Mm -hmm. Well, he sees a really bad golfer. Right? <laughs> he sees his dad. We've uh, golfed together since he was, I don't know, six or seven years old, mm -hmm. and uh, and he's a good golfer, and so he's put up with uh, with his dad. He started beating me when he was, I think, about twelve, uh, and so now it's just a treat. It's just a treat to watch him swing the club because he's got one of those like perfect swings, something I've never had. Uh, but he sees a guy who's, um, you know, loves certain sports. Hockey. Hockey. Love. Hockey, love the Leafs, love the Jets, mm -hmm. um, and especially the Leafs now. I mean, both teams are in a great position because yeah. they have exciting new young players uh, who are going to take them to heights the, that, uh, well, in Toronto's case, <laughs> it's been an awfully long time that they've been. I'm convinced of that. So convinced that I actually bought season tickets to the Leafs, so it's been a lifelong dream. You did? Yeah, and because now I'll actually be able to <laughs> go to the games. That's true. <laughs> right? The advantage is that's that's right. fishing. You like I fishing? I won't be complaining about Ron and Don knocking me <laughs> off the air. I'll just be sitting there enjoying like, the yes. game. <laughs> you know, as I sit here and, and chuckle with you and laugh, that's the one thing that always strikes people who, who don't have the opportunity to see you mm -hmm. privately is you're really funny. <laughs> and you laugh a lot right. uh, in your own life. Who makes you laugh? What makes you laugh? People make me laugh, you know, and, and circumstances. You know, not, not sort of the canned 
uh, routines, but sort of things that happen. And, you know, when you're doing the news, it's, you know, you can't suddenly start laughing in the middle of the program or cracking jokes. It's all pretty serious stuff. And so when you do get the opportunity, you're right. People go, wait a minute, <laughs> that's not... He's Mansbridge. not supposed that to can't be, be left. that way. I mean, we started doing Facebook Lives. I know you've done some as well, and we do them, uh, have been doing them in the middle of the national during commercial breaks. And it's live right in the middle of the program, but it's a different guy. <laughs> and the questions often are, are, are kind of light and airy, and uh -huh. it's fun. Uh, but they're astounded. My gosh, he, he actually has a sense of humor. Yeah, look, I mean, we deal with difficult subjects, and they're serious. And but you, you know we're human beings as well. And there, there's when there's an opportunity to uh, uh, to grab a smile, uh, that's okay. Here in Berlin, there's another opening in the wall tonight, number 22. When the waves crashed ashore here, and they didn't have far to come, there's the beach line. Our ride today is on an Israeli Air Force Black Hawk helicopter. That is the area that the suicide bombers used to get to some of their targets. Look at those. Those are the papal apartments just over on the other side. That's where the Pope lives. As night falls, we're back on the road, moving through the streets of Kandahar, and as always, on the lookout. What are the stories that have changed you? I can remember in Churchill, um, covering a fire at the, the Chippewan village, um, Dene village in, in Churchill. Churchill was a strange place back in the 60s. All the different communities were separated. There was the Inuit community, and at that time, we call that community an Eskimo community. Mm -hmm. There was the Chippewan community at Dene Village. There was the Cree Village. There was the Métis Village. There was the white community of Churchill, which was basically the private sector, and then there was Fort Churchill, which was the government sector. Now, all of these places were separated. There were very difficult times in uh, most of the indigenous uh, communities. And um, fires took a lot of lives. And I remember the first time covering a fire in Churchill when they were bringing bodies out. And I'd never seen anything like that. And so that image is still in my mind, and it flashes back to me every time I hear any story about a fire. Um, the biggest kind of international, the first major international story that I covered that, that involved that kind of um, impact that it has on you as a person was the exodus of the boat people from Vietnam mm -hmm. in the late 1970s. Uh, I was over there in Southeast Asia. I did you know, what we called um, a mini documentary for a program called News Magazine, which was kind of the, the, the banner news and current affairs show at that time. And it involved going out and talking to some of these people coming in off, off these terrible conditions on the South China Sea and the overcrowded boats and terrible things that would happen to uh, the men and women and children who were on these boats. Um, and seeing in them their focus, which was to get out of Vietnam. They didn't have no idea where they were going to, but their main concern was their kids. I need to find a country where my kids have a chance. Okay, we will accept his application to go to Canada. So I was one of dozens of foreign correspondents who were there at that time covering the story. And it was the first time that I realized in something I was doing, the impact you could have with the journalism that you did and the stories that you told. The joy of this moment is going to be short-lived because what's ahead is squalor, overcrowdedness, and uncertainty. Uncertainty about which country, if any, will take them in. Uh, and, you know, Canada ended up bringing in between 60 and 100,000 Vietnamese boat people over a number of years. And a lot of people point to the journalism of that day, of which mine was just a small part. But 
recognizing what they'd gone through, having a woman in a refugee camp in Hong Kong come up to me and, and hand her child to me with basically, please do something for this person. You know, she, she said that in, in French. Um, but, you know, you never, you never forget that, and it, and it has an impact you, on you forever. I run into now those children that those parents were talking about. And they've led successful, great lives. And their children are now, you know, going to university. And so I often, when I do meet them, I met another one just last week at McMaster. When you see in their eyes their excitement about what they've accomplished, you trace it back to what you saw in the eyes of their parents or grandparents, you know, about what they, why they were doing this. And so for me, when that happens, it's like a story comes full circle. You know, you're there at the beginning, you're seeing the impact of storytelling of a lot of different journalists had at the time. The National with Peter Mansbridge. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. I'm Peter Mansbridge, and this is The National. What has gone on in this studio is going to change very much when you leave. We know there will be three hosts, for example, not just yeah. uh, not one. What do, you, uh, what do you think of the future direction? I don't know what they're going to use for an office. <laughs> they have to cut my office in three, and my dressing room in three. Um, you know, I've been through a, a number of periods of change mm -hmm. on this program, on the national, and uh, they all uh, present real challenges and risks. You have to ensure that you're moving in some degree with the times, that you are offering those who are looking for new ways of consume news that opportunity but at the same time that you're not giving up on your principles about how journalism should be done. I've said that. You have promised that you will be involved in some way in CBC. Mm -hmm. It's just the national you're stepping aside from for now. Yeah. So uh, what are your specific plans here? Well, I, I'll step aside from everything that I have done. So the national one-on-one, -on -one, the, uh, the interview program, and, uh, and hosting specials. Um, we're talking about a number of possibilities for things outside of that because I don't want to get in I don't want to get in the way of those who follow me and I've made that uh, you know a, a definite part of any arrangement um, so there are you know there are opportunities on the documentary front uh, primetime specials uh, like that um, and uh, and we'll see you know, we'll uh, we'll work that out. I want to take a little time. You know, and, and not surprisingly, there have been a few other uh, possibilities that are have been put before me, and I want to make sure I'm choosing the right path. What are your thoughts, wishes, message for the three who will follow? Well, I give them the same advice that Knowlton gave me which is you, you are now the face you, and you have to accept the burden. And initially, um, everybody will say wonderful things about you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. They didn't last long in my case. Uh, but you then also become the target. Uh, you come a, become a target of critics of the CBC, the kind of permanent critics. Uh, you become a target of those who feel we're, uh, who are fans of the CBC but feel their shortcomings. Um, all of that happens, you've got to accept it. And you've, got to, you, you've got not only got to accept it, you've, you've got to embrace it. I mean, we're a target because people care about the CBC. Um, the overwhelming majority of Canadians still believe in a national public broadcaster. That doesn't mean they believe in everything the CBC does or thinks that everything the CBC does is done well. Their voices are important to listen to. And so when we're criticized, uh, you know, it took me a while to accept this, but when we're criticized, embrace it. First of all, is they care. And second, do they have a point? 
And if they do, let's deal with it. If they don't, let's explain our position better. And I think that's always been a problem for this place. The management of the CBC at times can do a better job of taking the message about what this place is and why it's important to the people where, wherever they can. Because there is a receptive audience there in mm -hmm. places in the country where some might think they aren't. You've been in families, you've been in households, you've been part of lives and routines for these many years and you've helped us understand our place, our country, our world and um, people I know will be extending good wishes. That's really kind of you. Can and I say one thing about that? Sure. Because that has kind of surprised me over this past year because I, I hear a lot from Canadians about that, whether it's in emails or whether it's on the street or in the airport. I've had people yell from their cars as I'm crossing the street walking to work. What I've come to realize is it's really not about me, it's about them and their connection to this place, to the CBC. That uh, because of my role um, of being sort of the guide to the great journalism that the many journalists here do both in front of and behind the cameras, they've associated part of the continuity of their lives with me. Whether they're watching the program or just simply flipping through the dial and seeing me there, that's okay. It's a you constant. Know. Yeah, it's a constant. Yeah. And they suddenly realize now that I'm not going to be there. And so they're, they think that that's going to be some real problem for them. It's not because the program is still here. And that's, that has been, I mean, that program that's on the screen behind you, it's called The National. Not The National with Peter Mansbridge. It's just the national. This is a tradition that goes back decades and decades. It's not hinged to one person. It's a program that's put together by a lot of people. And so it's the only network newscast in North America that doesn't place the name of the anchor on it. There have been times that we've talked about that, and I've always said no. And other people have said no. Uh, we shouldn't do that. For the very reason that it, it's not me. It's that and the journalists have put it on. Well, you've been a marvelous steward of it, and we will miss you. Thanks, Thank Heather. you. Thank you. And that's the National for this Sunday night. And that's the National this Monday night. And that's the National this Tuesday night from West Berlin. And that's the National for this Tuesday morning here in Kabul. That's the National for this Wednesday night. That's the National for this Thursday night. That's the National for tonight. I'm Peter Mansbridge. Thanks for watching.